Um, this meeting you know, is being the best recorded. Way to incorporate it into uh, what we now know as, as the college model. Um, and what does that exactly look like? I mean, obviously you've got so many different uh, states with their own uh, set of rules, so they try to bring some sort of commonality to, to all of that. Um, and really, until you know what that is, it's a little hard to comment on because it's hard to know exactly what it's going to look like. Um, so um, I think we, you know, I think there's, you know, it appears something's coming. It's just until we really know what that is, it's hard to really opinion one way or the other. Coach, we have Matt Schodell from Kingsport, as you can tell by his very loud typing. Matt, if you have a question for our Coach Diaz. Yeah, that's the benefit to being able to mute me, right, Cam? Hey, Coach, appreciate you doing this. Um, had uh, a couple of questions for you. So, first off, do you think there will be college football played in some form or fashion this fall? And then, if that is the case, or whenever it might be, how long will it take your team, do you think, to be ready to play a game? Is that the, uh, is that the Mac, Mac Classic keyboard, you know, the, the big <laughs> No, I, I, I'm not a, not a Mac. <laughs> I, I, it's a Matt. It's a Matt. I got you. Um, Matt, I do think uh, there will be college football. You know, I, I think that's been pretty consistent. The optimism from um, our leaders on campus and the conference uh, throughout the country um, in terms of what uh, getting prepared for that. And I think what we're all trying to come to terms with is, is a universal start date for practice um, that every school uh, has the same opportunity to get their team ready. I think we feel like a six-week time period um, would be the minimum uh, it would take to get our guys ready, even though we have worked on contingencies if, if somehow it was less. Now, in terms of your, your second part of your question, how long would it take to get a team ready to play? See, that's all dependent on really what our, what are we coming out of? You know, are we coming out of shelter in place? Are we coming out of some, you know, eight-week phase of, you know, where, where things are, are, are less restricted. It, it just, it's so hard to say. Um, obviously, you know, you, you, you'll have very differing levels of conditioning um, that, you, we've, you know, some players have access to weight, some players don't have access to weight, some players um, have access to, to more condition, you know, uh, cardiovascular conditioning than others. So, um, you know, the sooner we can get everybody back together again and assess what their conditioning level is and when that happens, which, and maybe that's only six weeks before the first game, but whatever it is, we're going to make it work. And I think as, as long as everybody's somewhat on the same page, on, you know, on the same page of what we get uh, practice-wise, I think I think we'll feel that this very competition will be intact for, for the football season. Coach, next up we have Christopher Stock from Inside the U. Chris, if you got a question for Coach Diaz. Yeah, Coach, you mentioned that your team was watching uh, film on Florida State and your staff had watched the Super Bowl um, at, at one point. Just kind of curious, lately, the last week or two, what your either your players have been doing watching-wise and then uh, your staff, just maybe an update, what you guys have been watching on film? Yeah, the, the last couple weeks, what day is today? <laughs> uh, uh, we, we did have a week that, in essence, was discretionary because of, uh, of final exams. Um, and actually, I, I want to make mention of that. I do, you know, grades come out next week, but I, I think we've had an outstanding semester. Um and I think we should make note of that. That's no easy thing. Remember, we went away for spring break uh, when all of this went down. So I don't know about how you guys remember spring break, but when I went away for spring break, I wasn't bringing my notebook, my books. Um, and of course, there weren't iPads back then. But, you know, I was, you know, you weren't exactly bringing your school supplies home with you when you left campus. So um, for our academic support staff and for our football staff to – and then for our players to really come together and, 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 and just, it's not an easy thing to just make a university go online. Um, but it sounds, I'm, I'm very encouraged by, by what I'm hearing in terms of how our guys performed in, in very unusual circumstances academically. So we had to take a little bit of time off for them to get through final exams. Um, and then we are, we're sort of in that same mod right, you know, right now, this, this would be, you think about right now, this week, assuming things were normal, would be their week to be home, and then they'd come back for summer A starting Monday uh, at UM. So we're kind of in that same mode now. We're going to pick up our structure again a week from now with positional meetings and, and things like that. So since the last time we spoke in terms of the, the things that you mentioned, yeah, I mean, we've been watching other opponents that we're going to play. We've had some guest speakers come in um, and be able to talk to our guys, you know, some former players, uh, things like that. So that's, that's kind of where we've been at. 
coach, we have Tim Reynolds from the AP. Tim, if you have a question for Coach Diaz. I do. Manny, thanks for doing this. I hope you're well. Thanks, Tim. Um, Manny, my question's about budgeting, and I know that's more of a Blake department than you, of course, but has, in your role, how, how has budgeting, has there been anything that's affected the football program so far just in terms of belt tightening or something like that? And, and along the same lines, obviously, there wasn't an NCAA tournament this year. The, we know that schools are going to get less money from the NCAA. How concerned are you going forward as to what the numbers might look like when every school, whether it's D1, D3, and everything in between, everyone's going to be doing some sort of some sort of really watching bottom line? How much is that affecting you? Thanks. Yeah, Tim, no one, no one, I mean, the, um, the tightening of the belt has been felt everywhere. Um, there's only one concern I have when, when you speak about budget, and, and that's a, that our student athletes um, don't feel the burden of that. And the one place, there's a lot of places where I can praise our administration, but from President Frank to, to Blake James to Jen Strawley, um, they have all been adamant that our, that our student athletes um, will not feel any different. Uh, we don't want their, their student athlete experience. Uh, other than the obvious of not being on campus, but we don't want their student athlete experience um, to be lessened in any way. Um, anything that we can get them um, through the value of the scholarship, we've been able to provide for them. Um, so as much as possible, you know, if 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 if, uh, if we can look at different thing parts around the program to to you know maybe change some way we do things, we'll do that. But not anywhere where it, it affects um, us presenting a first class student athlete experience to our to our young men. Coach, we have Andrea Adelson from ESPN. Andrea, if you've got a question for Coach Diaz. Hey, Manny, thanks for doing this. Um, you know, a lot of folks say that the key to getting this season started is going to be testing. And I'm wondering, you guys just had your spring meetings. Um, what was discussed in terms of what testing might look like and, and what potentially happens when someone tests positive? And you're talking about the ACC spring meetings? Yeah, right. So it, it's, it's really, to me, that's more of a localized issue, you know, because you're going to have, you know, you've got you know, a whole league filled with different um, schools in different states and different municipalities, you know. What, what I'm fortunate is that, is that, you know, I, I know this. I know there's no school who has a university president who is an expert in, in, in public health like we do with President Frank. Um, so I feel as confident in terms of our ability to um, to bring not just our student athletes but our student body back on campus this fall um, in a safe manner. And, and then, you know, Andrew, to your point, and if we even spoke through this um, to our team in our team meeting two days ago, you know, the next six weeks will be more important than the last six weeks because obviously now people will have a chance to become in more contact with one another than we were when we were all sheltering in place. Um, and our players have to understand, even even if the data says that their age group is not at risk of serious Ill, illness, um, which again at this point we're still learning um, exactly what you know what that data point is. Um, at the minimum, you're talking about a two week quarantine, right? Well, what two weeks is that going to be? Is that the two weeks of the six that we get for um, you know for, for for the preparation for the season? Is that the first two weeks of the season? Is that the last two weeks of the season in November? So. We want our players to understand that every one of them has a responsibility to protect the team. So if they say we have to be socially distant, we have to be socially distant. If they say we have to wear a mask when you go into a pharmacy, you got to wear a mask. But what if it's uncomfortable? It doesn't matter. It's not about your comfort. It's about protecting the team. Because if you bring something into our team, if you're a corner and you're carrying it asymptomatic and you play a bumper on, on, on a couple of our wideouts and, and, and four of our wideouts get it, we're having a hard time fielding an offense. So our messaging to our guys was, it's not about you, protect the team, which if you think about it broadly, that's really all of our messaging, right? Is that even if the disease is not in a direct threat to me, which is debatable whether it is or isn't, okay, um, you still have a, a responsibility to, to protect the greater collective. And, and, and if we do the right thing, then we will. Um, but our guys understand that, that the calendar is changing. You know, we're only a couple weeks away from June, and, the, and they can – they can start to feel the rhythm of, of here we go, let's get football season going. So, um, so we, we were able to say, look, we have, we have, we've done a good job of controlling what we can control up to this point. Um, 
but we don't turn the dial down now. If anything, we turn it up as we all, you know, come out of our, our homes and, and, uh, and get into this new normal. Great. Coach, next up we have Manny Navarro from The Athletic. Manny, if you have a question for Coach Diaz. Hey, Coach. I uh, love your background, by the way. i got to get get me one of those. Yeah. Hey, um, I, I'm, I'm curious. You were talking about, you know, going to the pharmacy, things like that. Um, you know, I know you, you spend a lot of time at home on Zoom meetings and whatnot, but does Manny Diaz go to Publix with, the, with a mask on and a bunch of gloves? I mean, what, how, do you, how have you sort of lived throughout this whole um, pandemic so far? And, and I know Florida's opening up, obviously. On Monday, we see all the news reports. Um, are you planning to be out in the community more, you know, in a protective way? What, what do you, what's your stance sort of been throughout this pandemic as far as when you go out and what you do? Well, first and foremost, we'll still rely on the university for when we're allowed back, you know, in the office. Um, so we're, st- we're still working at home right now. You know, again, we do live in these little Zoom boxes. This has kind of been our, our normal. Um, but in terms of going out, um, you know, and you follow the rules when you when you go out. If you're in an area with a bunch of people, then then you wear a mask. You know, if if, if you if you see me running, you know, up and down old color, you know, I'm not gonna have a mask on at, at that point. You know, but I mean, I, I you know, I, I think this is a point where, you know, we, we kind of got to follow the game plan, right? And uh, and I think that's why it's so important for the leadership at the local level, the state level, and the, and the national level to be consistent with our messaging in terms of what exactly we have to do. And, and then, like any good team. Uh, we all we all got to follow along, and I think that's uh, you know you talk about what I'm doing. It's it's no different. Coach, we have David Wilson from the Miami Herald. David, if you have a question for Coach Diaz. Hey, Manny. Um, SEC presidents and chancellors are I guess scheduled to vote next week about maybe getting football players back on campus as soon as June first. Um, I'm just kind of curious your thoughts on that, and and kind of just whether you have a sense one way or another as to whether there's like optimism about maybe getting some of your players on campus at some point in the summer. Well, we'll see is the answer. And, and remember, you know, who decides who gets back on campus again is a, is a government decision. Um, and how people, that's not something that, that leagues decide. It's, it's, it's a decision of, of um, you know, what's going on in your city versus what's going on in your city, what's in your state versus your state. And, and so, you know, I think we all have to follow our, um, our elected leadership and, and when they give us a green light on, on what we're able to do, then, then we go from there. No different. I mean, we saw the, the Miami Heat needed, you know, they needed a special little, you know, order from the county governor to count their practice ability not as a gym, you know, because that's not, you know, that's not you know, a, a workout. Gym. It's different. So um, I'm sure the NBA would have decided to have their guys back, but they still need the local government to, 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 to play along. So we, we, I'm sure it's the exact same thing in college football. Coach, we have Tom D'Angelo from the Palm Beach Post. Tom, if you have a question for Coach Diaz. Hey, Manny. Hope you and your family are safe. Um, you know, we, we've seen the golf is coming back this weekend. We've seen all kinds of the PGA tours taking all kinds of measures to, for changing guidelines and how the game is going to be played moving forward when they get back on the regular tour. How do you see football? Do you see much having to change for football to be played in, in, in this environment? The actual playing of the game? Yes. Uh, yeah. yeah I, I, but, go ahead. In, I, in terms of, I think, once the, the ball is kicked off, I don't know that there could be a dramatic difference in the actual way that the game is played. Um, I think more, you know, I know you mentioned golf. <laughs> I never thought I'd be more excited for German soccer Uh Saturday morning. I, I just want to see somebody run around and chase a ball. Um, but I think I think the Germans are a great model to see because you know they're, they are really the first league uh, back to play, um, and, and and to see how that goes. Because again, you know, I mean, soccer is still a, a, a you know to an extent it's a contact sport. So I think just wanting, watching them and monitoring them and, and the way that they you know and I, I know you're doing professional athletes. This is different, um, but it, you know that it, I think that'll be a fascinating study for the entire world. I know the sort of the world will, will be watching the Germans here over the next few weeks. Coach, we have David Ferrones of the South Florida Sunset. Oh, David, if you have a question for Coach Diaz. 
Hi, Manny. I wanted to ask uh, about any updates on uh, the guys who were injured or uh, sitting out during that uh, one week of spring that you did have. Um, I know you guys. It's harder right now to keep up with them, uh, not being able to see them. But uh, I know you're you're trying to stay in contact via Zoom meetings, whatever it may be, coaches and trainers, uh, guys like uh, Brevin Jordan, Devon Donaldson. I know last week uh, uh, Blake Baker said Bubba Bolden's progressing well. Uh, the linebackers, uh, you know, all those guys. Yeah, I mean, we're obviously the reports we've been getting. They've been on a Zoom therapy session, you know, every day the entire spring semester. Um, all the reports are are good. Um, we are going to have access for our guys that are coming off of surgery um, to be able to enter the building to get treatment, and we'll we'll start ramping up that procedure next week. So um, they will be get the face to face, and that's a great little dry run and test measure for the you know the different protocol of coming into the building and and and, uh, and that type of deal. So um, right now, I mean, the best way I can answer your question is that we feel like there's been no setbacks. Um, in any of our guys, we're looking forward to slowly being able to get around them more and, and, and watch and see how they progress. Coach, we have Barry Jackson from the Miami Herald. Barry, if you have a question for Coach Diaz. Hi, Manny. Just wanted to check if you have any offer out at the moment to any transfer, anybody in the portal. Do you have any outstanding offers to? And also, do you have the ability to add another player at this point if you find one you like or are you fully booked scholarship-wise? We, we, have, we have the ability to add players. Uh, to answer the second part of your question, and then, as, as we always are, we're always looking for ways that uh, we can potentially improve our football team. Coach, we have Gabby Arutia from 24-7 Sports. Gabby, if you have a question for Coach Diaz. Yeah, Coach, I actually have a, I have a two-part question. The first one is um, just a repeat question. Um, what do you feel like are some of the biggest needs that you are trying to address in this 2021 class specifically? And the second part is what's kind of like the plan for official visits now that the the dead period extended through June 30. You guys haven't typically done a lot of in-season, but it feels like that might have to change now with everything going on. So just kind of your, your thoughts on how you guys plan on approaching that. Well, from an vi official visit standpoint, um, you know, one, we'll, 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 we'll wait and, and, and to find out if July is also dead, um, which we suspect it will be. Um, and, and then once that happens, you're really talking about pushing it into the season, into the fall. Um, there's a lot of questions that need to be answered before we get back into having official visits. Um, it'll be a different year because everybody, everybody will be, uh, you know, clamoring for, for the same couple weekends. Uh, you may have to have more visits during the season uh, than you've had in the past. As you mentioned, I think I think I heard you right. We've not we've not been a big summer official visit team. We really like to push guys uh, to December or January. Um, there's going to be a there, look. There's going to be a. a uh, an unpredictability to this recruiting cycle. We're just doing something that we never dealt with before. Um, we've seen the numbers of, of, of kids that have committed, and, and who knows if that will stick nationally. So it's, it's just going to be different. That's the only thing you can say about this, um, and I'm sure it will be different for us as well. In terms of what we're, what we're focusing on, um, I mean, I think we're doing the same thing we're doing every year. I mean, we're trying to sign an entire football team. I mean, I don't, I don't think that there's a position that we're, that we're not uh, targeting. Um, I mean, I mean, I think there's certainly some I – mean, we're – Again, I think we're trying to build a, a football team, and, and you're always trying to out-recruit yourself every year if, if you're doing it right. So, I mean, I can't think of a spot where we're not, you know, trying to bring in, you know, guys at every spot that we, that we think can help us compete. And, 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 and broader than that, some of the 2020 class are also like our kind of guys, you know, guys that want to compete and guys that understand, you know, what it means to put that you on your helmet. Coach, we have Matt Baker of the Tampa Bay Times. Matt, if you have a question for Coach Diaz. Hey, Manny, thanks for doing this. Aside from the obvious of your health and your family's health and the health of everybody in the program, what are kind of your biggest overall concerns as this virus is still going on? Well, I think it's the uncertainty, right? I think there's there's just an unpredictability with it, and, and I think that's what is um, – I think that's what makes things so difficult because we want to deal in absolutes, um, and when we don't have things in absolutes um, – you know, sometimes, you know, I mean, the scientific method is predicated on, I don't know, you know, and you're always trying to disprove a hypothesis, you know, and, and we don't really do well with that. So, I mean, I think just the idea of, of understanding we've got to live in a little bit of an under, uh, uncertainty, which, by the way, that's sports, right? I mean, that, that that's all the world. I mean, like our team, our coaches, like we understand that. Like, you know, you make plans 
and you understand that there's a degree of uncertainty. I think at times um, it's fun to sort of everybody wants to stack their arms and say, you know, I know this is going to happen, and I told you that we should done that we should have done this before. Uh, but we know in reality it's just not the way the world operates. So um, I think just becoming comfortable with with the uncertainty and and the ability to adjust on the fly, I think is going to be the key for all of us. And 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 like I said, I think the sports world probably. Uh, lives in that domain more than, than most. Looks we've got time for more. We're going to go with Ruthie Polinski of WTBJ. Ruthie, if you have a question for Coach Diaz. Hi, Coach. Um, I'm new to Miami, so hoping to meet you in person at some point. Um, I have a question, just kind of how you're navigating this uncertainty with your players, these you know, 17, 18-year-old kids who have been waiting to play college football, Division One college football their whole lives, and just kind of you know, how you deal with that? Are you able to kind of lean on the upperclassmen or are they kind of in the same boat? Do you see kind of a difference between the young guys and the older guys? It, it's, it's a fascinating dynamic. The older guys at first, you know, they might have been more scared than anybody because, you know, the more you're around, the more you realize how short a college career actually is. You know, and so for a second, you know, they're like, hey, are we not going to have, am I not going to have a senior year? You know, when you're a freshman, you think you're going to play forever. Um, so, there's, there's definitely the weirdness of, you know, we had a great group of, I think, 14 mid-year enrollees that graduated high school early to come to campus, you know, have a great two months in Coral Gables and then get told to stay home for two months. I mean, that's pretty unusual. Um, and that's why I think, as I mentioned before, it's so important that they're, as much as we can control, that their student-athlete experience doesn't change. Now, what, what we have told them from, from a messaging standpoint is, and again, it's kind of our theme of spring ball, which is just play the next play. Right, which all we can do right now is just do what's in front of us right this second. Control we can control. So I, you know, we kind of gave him a pat on the back because, again, by all reports, we had a really good spring semester. Which guess what? That was really the only thing that we could control. Uh, what can we control now? We we'll, we will have guys in summer school starting on Monday. Okay, you got to win again at academics. Other than that, really, what we're doing right now is two things: one, stay healthy, and two, get your body in as, in as good a condition as you possibly can. So when they do let us come back that you're as close to being game ready as we can go. And that's really it. That's really all about we can control right now. So um, I think as, as long as like we all need hope, I think that's what sports provides all of us is that there is some hope. I think that's what's going to be fun when, you, you know, you're, you're, when you talk about the PGA or Major League Baseball starting in July or whenever we get the NBA back, um, I think that gives all of us a little bit of hope um, that we are going to learn, at, at the minimum, just learn how to live with this. And even if it's a new normal, even if it doesn't go back right away, to what we all knew. So um, controlling what we can control and, and, and staying present is e- always, we know it's easier said than done, but that's usually, that's usually the answer. Coach, we've got two more for you. One from Marcus Benjamin of Football Hotbed. Marcus, if you have a question for Coach Diaz. Hold on one sec. You good, Mark? Yeah, there you go, Marcus. Yeah, I just wanted to ask, Coach, uh, what are some of the ways specifically that you're keeping your players engaged uh, on a day-to-day or week-to-week basis to just to, to kind of maintain the focus of the football team? That, that's a challenge, you know. Um, I mean, it's it's hard to, as even in this setting right here, it's hard to, you know, when, when we all sit in front of computer screens in front of Zoom or, or whatever type of software all day, it, it is difficult. Um, but that's why I think it's about the content. It's about the timing, you know, when we do have meetings, we try to keep the meetings um, on, you know, on point. Uh, we try not to have it drag out. Uh, we try to present things that, that they want to hear. And like, like I said, whether that's bringing um, guest speakers into into segment meetings, um, whether that's showing them, you, you know, they all watched the, 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 the last two and a half minutes of episode seven of the MJ doc. Oh yeah. They, they saw that this week. And you know what I mean? So you're always just trying to, find engaging content any, anywhere you can. Um, you're trying to give them the updates, you know, of, of where we're at. Um, you know, you're, you're trying to do anything you can to keep them engaged um, because it is difficult. But like I said, the one thing you have at the end of the day to sell is you have to sell hope. Um, is that when we get to run through that smoke in September, no one's going to remember where you were in your feelings on April 14th. It should be about how we perform. So you're still trying to sell that idea that, like, what I do today will make me play better in September when I'm allowed to play. And, and that's, you know, that's been our, that's been our battle. 
Coach, last up, we have Daryl Streeter of Football Field. Daryl, if you have a question for Coach Diaz. I, sure, I surely do. Coach, uh, what's going on? How you doing? Coach, um, in this time where things have changed and um, uncertainty, um, what are some of the positives that, 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 that have came out of this time? Anything positive came out of this? Well, I'll use one from a football standpoint and one from a personal standpoint. Um, from, a fo- from a football standpoint, um, I think this has really been a, a – a, a boost for our recruiting efforts. Um, I think we've had a great opportunity um, during a time frame when we normally would be, you know, in the midst of spring ball, um, when everything stopped, you know, and whether whether that was evaluating recruiting tape, um, whether that was, you know, getting onto Zoom calls with our recruits, um, really fostering a great relationship with some of the families of our recruits. And we're not alone in doing this. Don't, you know, I'm not saying we, we, we got this figured out ourselves, but I do think, especially some of the new members of our staff who, who are all outstanding recruiters, Coach Lashley and Justice and, and Likens, I think it's really given us an opportunity to, to really play catch up in some spots, you know what I mean, and really start to, to solidify some relationships uh, in the recruiting process um, because everyone's home. You know, that's just one of the things that, you know, everybody's life kind of slowed down, not just us, but, but the young men. Um, and to that point, the second part, from a personal standpoint, um, I think just the idea of family, you know, I mean, you know, I've, I've got three sons and, and it's not just how busy my life is. It's how busy their life is. You know, I mean, everybody, you know, no matter what age you are, I mean, we're all, we're all overbooked, right? I mean, I think we all get it's happened. We've all gotten a big red stop sign for the last nine to 10 weeks and, and you got to slow down. So, you know, some of this time that we've had, you know, with the family, and especially if you've got, you know, you know, um, I've got, I've got a, you know, an eighth grader and 10th grader and one of just finished college. And, and you know, that that time is if, if, if you've parented a high school or you realize once they get into that high school, man, they, they zip out of that thing and it's, it happens fast. Um, so on one hand, I, I feel for the high school student, you know, a part of their high school experience, uh, taken away, but, but selfishly as a parent, it's been pretty, it's, it's been, you know, it's nice to know that you've got some time there. Um, that is not promised us, and, and I think it makes you appreciate, you know, those relationships and how we have. Coach Diaz, thank you very much for joining us today. We hope you and your family stay safe, and uh, I'm sure we'll be hearing from you soon. Good, good to see everybody, and I uh, can't wait to see everybody back in the man sitting six feet apart, you know, which I think you guys kind of do that anyway. You guys made it. <laughs> we may have invented social distancing. Yeah. Uh, we built it at the Schwartz Center. That's right, yeah. Awesome. Thanks, Coach Diaz. All right. See you all. Thanks.